Exactly. When I go to people's places and their level of detail is higher than mine, it's like, yeah, you get it. Guys, <laughs> welcome back to the Biomed Scoop. I'm here with Carson as usual. And today we're going to be talking about spring hair care tips. Yes, and what we want to start doing at the beginning of each show is shout out one of our favorite <clears throat> followers or one of our favorite accounts that we follow. And today we wanted to um, shout out to Titan underscore the underscore Warlander. Titan the Warlander on Instagram. Um, this horse is, I mean, Titan is... A beautiful horse. Uh, we've worked with the owner on several occasions, and um, anyways, they're great folks. And, and if you go visit Titan's page on Instagram, you'll see why we wanted to shout out um, Titan the Warlander. He's, I mean, just a beautiful horse. And for those that aren't familiar um, with Warlander horses, um, Warlanders are Frisian and Andalusian crosses, and uh, Anyways, Titan's a five-year-old Warlander stallion. So go check out Titan the Warlander on Instagram. And yeah, today we're going to talk about spring uh, hair care tips for your horse. I don't have a bullet list that I want to cover necessarily. I just kind of am going to talk about what we do with all the biomain horses during spring. Um, it's starting to warm up, obviously. So you can start bathing them, um, even if it is a little chilly. As long as it's not too cold to get them sick, um, I'll wash them about any time of the day as long as the sun's out and the wind's not blowing. If it's chilly and the wind's blowing, I won't. Last thing you want to do is get them sick. We've talked about that on podcasts before. But I will – I'll wash them really good and tie them out in the sun and let them dry out before I go and start brushing manes and tails. I try to avoid brushing manes and tails while they're wet. Um, <clears throat> points to make in – shedding horses because you're going to be dealing with a lot of shedding uh, especially if you haven't kept horses under lights or blanketed if you allowed them to get a thick heavy uh, winter coat um, <clears throat> make sure that like a lot of people when they're brushing and shedding out horses they do what they can see on the body of the horse mm -hmm. they a lot of times miss underneath their cinch underneath their belly sorry where the cinches go and up in what I would say kind of their armpit area uh, when horses are shedding a lot, that's an area that causes a lot of sweat, you know, up where their cinches. And with that hair longer and starting to fall out, that's an area, those are areas where hair can kind of get bunched up. If those hairs get, that hair gets bunched up there, it can't, and not cleaned out. Um, they can get sores there a lot. Like in the spring, it's really common for horses to get cinch rot to get um, sores kind of up and underneath in the cinch area in their, I should look up the correct term, but it's really in their armpits of their mm -hmm. front legs. Um, so make sure you're cleaning those really good, washing them, scrubbing them, and shedding those areas as well. Also, keep your saddle blankets, saddle blankets, pads, um, and cinches clean. Because after every ride, even right now, like after every horse we ride, um, their cinches are coated in hair. And if you just continually keep using that, you're going to get some buildup. You're going to get bacteria buildup from that sweat. And some horses roll around in their pen. You know, if you get manure or anything under their belly, that's bacteria, obviously. And those areas are prone to um, infection, kind of like I said, the Sintra. Um, So keep those areas clean. Um, Is that as simple as like just taking, let me take your blanket off, basically. Every time you unsaddle, just make sure you, you know, clean off all the excess hair that's on there like yeah in what in whichever way is best for that saddle pad mm -hmm. like i've got some saddle pads that you know it's a neoprene liner underneath that you can just essentially spray off um some that are wool some that are uh like a like a more of a sheep 
type wool you know what i mean really fluffy yeah. soft some that are like a like a matted wool so just usually the manufacturer of the pads has recommendations on how you should clean those however you do it like some of them we use curry combs on some of them we just go in I, i've got a, a kind of a heavier duty blower and i blow them off let them dry um, before you're throwing them back on uh, if you're riding multiple horses a day, let, you know, get more pads. So you're not yeah. putting sweaty pad on a sweaty pad, sweaty pad on different horses and transferring yeah. that over. Um, that's obviously not main and tail care tip. I'm just going over what we're doing right now with the Wyoming horses. And we're riding a lot of them right now. Um, also, when places that people overlook when they're shedding horses is their face. Mm-hmm. Like, especially horses that have big forelocks. A lot of people won't um, brush their foreheads, brush around their eyes, the little dimples that go rest right behind their eyes. You got to be real careful because that really goes down behind their their eye socket. But they'll you'll get hair built up there that's shed out. Use a fine tooth comb. Use your finger to kind of scrape those areas. Yeah. Um, don't be curry combing their faces or anything like that. Using sharp type brushes, but but get that hair out of their face. Um, out from behind their ears, in their ears. I shouldn't say in their ears, but at the base of their ears. Um, be cleaning those out just because those are areas that the more hair that's built up there with the temperatures getting warm, the more those areas are going to sweat and collect dust and, and build up and cause um, irritation there. Yeah, and cause them to rub. <clears throat> exactly, and that's that's the main reason. If they've got if they've got an irritation up around their ears or their eyes or something, they're going to want to rub. And just because that section of their eye is what itches doesn't mean they're not going to rub their whole neck trying to itch that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so we're trying to prevent rubbing. Keep them clean. Um, if it's warm enough where you're at during the spring to, to spray them off frequently, do. Um, we. It's warm enough now that ever, after every ride we spray them off. I'll spray them off, let them completely dry, tied up to a fence, and then I'll turn them out if they need to go roll. Like some horses I've got just will not roll. Some try rolling while we tie them to the fence. Like they want to roll bad, yeah. um, which is fine. Uh, I usually let them dry out before they go roll, and then I'll blow them off with that blower to get that sand because we got sand in the arena. Mm-hmm. I'll blow them off to get that sand out out of their coat. Um, oh, what else are we doing? We're able to wash the manes and tails uh, more frequently now, and like all winter long, not being able to wash them as frequently as we want, other than on warm days or when we hauled them up to a barn. We're washing them and braiding them more frequently just because now we can, and we want them to look good all the time. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so that's it. Wash them as frequently as you can. Um, winter is hard on tailbags because a lot of times they get wet, they get muddy, and we don't feel like we can wash them frequently because of the weather. Um, so make sure your tailbags are clean. Um, not necessarily the exterior of them. That doesn't really matter um if they're caked with stuff obviously clean them up just to prolong the life of that but make sure when you're taking tails out of tail bags if that or if you notice when you're taking tail bags off dump that tail bag out and see and or fill in the bottom there's some horse i've got two or three horses at the place that every week or so that we'd redo their tails there's you know in the base of a tail bag it's full of sand and dirt that deep how it it really (laughs) is just from them rolling Mm -hmm and getting dirt in there make sure that you're checking that frequently like if you're the person that leaves your tail bag on for a long amount of time we don't recommend that obviously but we understand sometimes you leave them in longer at least check that because what that your tail is resting in the bottom of that bag and if that's full of dirt and stuff every time that horse swishes that tail that dirt and sand is just grinding into those hairs so check that frequently even if you take the tail bag off pointless to wash and redo your braids and all that and then Tailbag, exactly well and 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 even if you clean it prior to that make sure you're checking that frequently because if that hair is being rubbed on that dirt you're just damaging that hair so even if once a week you don't want to redo the whole tail take the tail bag off dump it out make sure that tail bag's clean and put it back in um one thing i was going to say is one i mean <clears throat> what we usually harp on during the winter is um keeping your pens clean and winter, obviously, I mean, is a messy time, but spring in a way is more messy than winter because the ground, I mean, depending on where you live, the ground starts to thaw. It can get even more muddy. Um, it's going to be raining instead of snowing, uh, which is obviously a lot messier. So 
Um, the, the effort we put into telling you to keep your pens clean during winter is, I mean, just as applicable, maybe more so applicable during spring. When Definitely, because in the winter in those colder areas, your ground's froze. Well, now all that snow and ice that's built up is thawing out, and it's just make sure if you can, not it's obviously unthawing and making things wet. If you can, trench around your pens so all that runoff mm. goes in the trenches and runs off instead of running into your pens. Um, yeah, keep keep your pens as clean as possible. And we've got some – it's been kind of surprising. We have got some pushback on uh, keeping your pens clean tip. I mean, some people obviously pasture and, and don't even have pens, so that doesn't apply to y'all. But one of the thing, I mean, there's just no alternative to keeping your pens clean. What's the pushback? I haven't seen this. <clears throat> one was just the difficulty of doing it in winter. The other was a lot of people turn them out. And the other one was that, like – it's pointless because your horse is just going to want to roll around anyways. And I think that third point kind of proves the point of why you have to keep your pens clean is because yeah, your horses are going to roll and we know it's hard work, but I, I, I mean, I think it's important that we always reiterate like by all means for people that want to put in the extra effort to, to have good looking horses. That's the thing is for the best results. <clears throat> this is what we're telling you. you know? And like everybody's situation is different. Well, I turn them out to pasture during the day. I bring them into a stall at night. Okay, great. Like, so he rolls out when he's in the pasture and he gets dirty. Well, that sucks. You're going to have to find a way to clean him. Or, hey, go buy a really inexpensive turnout blanket. Even if you don't like your horse blanketed, get a really lightweight turnout blanket and put it on him. So if he yeah. does roll out in the mud and all that junk, he's rolling on that turnout blanket Hose that thing off, put it in your garage, put it in a shop and let it dry. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like I could argue every one of those points. And especially the, the well, he's just going to roll in his pen anyways. Okay, so if he rolls in fresh shavings or fresh sand or fresh dirt, that's, even if it's not fresh, if it's picked, like clean, the pen's cleaned, all the manure's out, and he goes and rolls in, like my pens are that red type sand. Mm -hmm. If they roll in that and they stand up, they get sand on them. I take a brush. I can brush them off. I can blow them off. If they roll in, if chrome rolls in that sand and it's full of manure and crap, she's going to be green. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that doesn't brush off. Like it stains her coat. We have to shampoo and wash her heavily to get that stain out. I'd much rather brush off some sand in a freshly picked pen. And if you're doing it frequently, like I, this is why I don't want to necessarily get into this because it's talking about people being lazy mm -hmm. like it is really what it is we've got tw i've got 20 by 20 stalls they're 20 foot by 20 foot and we've got 16 of them right now like it takes an hour tops to go through once a day to go through and pick them it could take three hours if i just <laughs> was lazy about it and yeah. took my time but if i go in and hustle and get them done that's why i don't even want to get into it because this is going to cause a bunch of <laughs> pushback you know what i mean oh you're calling me yeah. lazy yeah if you're not cleaning your pens every day and you're complaining about your horse rolling in manure and being dirty it's your fault you know what i mean yeah um so it's all about effort and like the point you made is spot on biomane is for horses that you want to grow a big thick long mane and tail on and if you haven't noticed, braiding long, thick manes and tails and maintaining them is high maintenance. It really is. And which we're good with. If you don't want to put the maintenance in, great. Don't use the product. Don't try and grow the hair. You're not going to have a big mane and tail. But for us, it's worth it. And for thousands of people that have used it, it's worth it. Um, and with that goes a little more effort. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just think every tip that we give <clears throat> is in the context that we – are basically trying to help people have the best looking horses that they can. And, yeah, and I'm and someone's level of detail might be higher than yours, but I mean that's just and like when I when I go to people's places and their level of detail is higher than mine, it's like yeah, you get it. Like I don't know, that's just I love when I go to a place and their pens are clean, their manes are braided up, they're doing it, you know, even better than because I feel like I'm pretty good at it i slack at times because we got so many of them but i feel like we do a pretty good job taking care of the manes and tails and when i go somewhere else and they've taken even better care than what we can i don't get stoked about it because like yeah. you get it and yes like yeah it's high like why do you do it like 
there's so much more value in these horses if they look good all the time and they have that big mane and tail. There's you look at all the big all the big horse sales in like especially Arizona mm-hmm. throughout the winter. The horses that brought the most money weren't just the horses that performed really good. They were the horses that looked outstanding. Yeah, like definitely. there were some dinks that sold for a lot of money because they looked really good. Yeah, and not that you're trying to fool people into making a better horse because it looks good. They're not buying the horse because how good the horse was necessarily. They're buying on looks. Well, I think it's just. I mean, it's universally accepted that a part of a horse's value is. It's appearance. Oh, hundred percent. Like I mean, if I go to, if you're going to go buy a horse and there's five, hor- five sorrel horses lined up, all of them have a blaze face. All of them have four white stockings and they look, I mean, they're essentially this, the same color, same marking, same, all that. Mm-hmm. They all perform the same way. Yeah. The horse I'm going to buy. And I would argue the horse that most people are going to buy is a horse that stands out looks wise. Yeah. And one of those factors in looks is mane and tail. I that's I, I would argue that all day long. Yeah, definitely. So well what else? Is there any other things that come to mind related to spring care before we wrap up? Um brush them frequently. Like those horses are shedding. The more that you can brush that that hair out of them, mm-hmm. the less likely they are gonna be to rub. Because if they've got thick buildup of, of dead hair of their winter coat that's shedding off that's how, I mean, that's how they, if a horse in the wild, if that shed enough, that's how they shed. They'll roll, they'll rub, they're wanting to get that coat thinned out and lightened up. So if you can help assist do that, you're going to prevent a lot of rubbing and, and itching throughout the whole spring. So brush them frequently um, and get as much of that hair out as possible on a daily basis if you can, really, because you're just, that's preventative care is preventing them from rubbing. Um, is, excuse me. Um, brushing frequently, helping them shed off. Yeah, I would say that's the biggest thing. Watch thrush uh, in their feet because springtime is a wet time. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure, and another reason to keep their pens clean and dry. Um, pick their feet frequently, uh, even if they're you know in a dry pen, if they're standing in urine or standing in manure and that gets packed into their hooves and it's not cleaned out frequently, they can get thrush, that bacterial infection. Um, so keep their feet clean, brush them frequently, just keep them looking good and, and healthy. Treat them like, like they're, I don't care what you do with them, treat them like they're worth a lot of money and their looks and their health and their soundness is the most valuable part of them. Yeah. And I mean, winter and spring are the two seasons that probably require the most attention to details, keeping things clean because, you know, when summer and fall come around, one, a lot of people are traveling with their horses a lot, so they're not in um, the same pen all day, every day. And two, I mean, obviously just the weather's better. So although winter and spring seems like a lot of work to to get these results, like I guess take heart that summer's around the corner. And- yeah, and it, it pays off in summer and late spring, early summer when you get to a show or you go do something with your horse and your horse is the one slicked off and looks really good. Mm-hmm. It just shows that, hey, you put in the extra time, the extra effort to keep your horse looking good. And he's the one that, you know, is not going to be prone to rubbing, not going to be prone to being lame due to some bacterial infection in his foot, such as thrush. Like, take care of him this time of year, um, even more so than maybe others because of so many different factors in the change of seasons that can can uh, harm him. Yeah. One other question I was going to ask was, so we're working on creating our own shedding brush right now it's not going to be available uh, be available this shedding season we're kind of shooting for next shedding season to release that uh but between now and then is there a type of you know shedding tool or, or what type of shedding brush would you maybe recommend to someone for this season um every, it's all kind of personal preference i know the ones that i like but my recommendation is when you're using them if you're using a, th- a longer kind of longer toothed mm-hmm. comb yeah uh, like you know the the shedding brushes that kind of loop and you can hold them with with one hand mm-hmm. as a loop or you can take it take the one handle and slide it through the through the little keeper and you can make it into like a like a almost a saw looking yeah, yeah, deal yeah. using those those are pretty sharp i i use them mm-hmm. or have used them i don't use them anymore but i have you since we've been developing ours yeah. that's kind of all i 
use anymore, but I have used those in the past. When you're using those, don't put a ton of pressure on them. You know, pressure meaning push hard. When you're shedding them out, don't feel like you got to push hard and get down into that coat because all you're doing is cutting hair yeah. if you're pushing hard. Just go across the surface. The hair's already loose, you know? Yeah, I mean, and there's some just... deep in their coat that you're not going to get unless you really work at it. But that'll come out eventually. Yeah, do it tomorrow. You know what I mean? Just do the top layer. Just do as much as you can. I shouldn't say even do as much as you can. Do it. Do it lightly. Mm-hmm. Hard, I mean, enough pressure that you're pulling hair out, but don't feel like you got to get that horse completely de-shedded in one day. It's not going to happen. Honestly, it's going to take two, three weeks yeah. if your horse sheds out at a regular pace. Because the last thing you want to do is damage that coat. Yeah, exactly. And cause him unco- discomfort. Like if yeah. you're sitting there shedding your horse and he's trying to get away from you, it's miserable. And that's when you start getting nipped at and kicked, and then you go to saddle the horse and he's thinking you sit there and – drilled on me all day why the heck would i perform well for you if you're riding me you know what i mean you've already blown his blown his mind um and don't use those types of brushes on their faces just imagine honestly their their hair even if they're winter coat their hair and their skin are very thin and sensitive on their face so just imagine rubbing whatever you're going to rub on his face imagine rubbing that across your forehead and if that hurts you or it makes you cringe, don't do it on them. Yeah. Honestly, like I get cotton gloves, like rope gloves, and that's what I de-shed their face with a lot. I use our brush, mm, our de-shedding brush, because it's not severe at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I use that on their face, around their eyes, their muzzle, everything. But if you don't have something that's not severe, just put like a rope glove on or a cotton glove, something that's got some, not grip, but some... Like a, like a smooth leather glove, mm-hmm. work glove, wouldn't work because you're just going to go across the skin. Something that will cause a little friction. Yeah, friction thing. Mm-hmm. That's the word. And just rub in circles, different directions, up and down, all over, and that hair is going to come out. Cool. So that's what I would say to use. You can also use our mane and tail brush. I've used that frequently on their around their eyes and on their faces. Just make sure you clean that out before you go to brush their manes. But that works well. Mm-hmm. Cool. I think we got a lot of good stuff covered. I think so, too. Um, I guess to summarize... What would you kind of say? So, I mean, we talked about obviously putting in the extra effort to keep the pens and their obviously bodies, manes and tails clean. Um, what other quick points to summarize? I would, uh, their, their winter coats come out really well when you're washing them. Mm-hmm. So if, wash. if your weather's good enough, wash them as frequently as possible. Uh, make sure you're doing the manes and tails seven to ten, every seven to ten days and keep, uh, help assist shed them out. Don't let, uh, don't leave it to your horse to completely shed himself out, help him out, brush him as frequently as possible because you're going to help prevent them from being uncomfortable wanting to rub. Mm-hmm. That's what I would say. Cool. Right on. Well, this has been, I guess, our best tips on uh, spring hair care, hair care for your horse. Um, if you have any questions or comments uh, or even haters, like if you didn't like this and you want to argue with us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's great. We love addressing, concerns or criticism that people have um and if you have time to do that you should get something else to do (laughs) but we're not going to turn away criticism we definitely appreciate the feedback yeah (laughs) but yeah please like subscribe share this uh wherever you spend your time on your phone we'll do another one peace later Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, so don't hesitate to comment on our videos. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.